Hi everybody, it's Miss Sherry from Christ Church Children's Ministry. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you all are enjoying your summer. I know I am. I like it when it's hot and humid like it is. I know some people think I'm crazy, but I love summer and I hope you all are enjoying yours. And Mr. Potato Head has joined me today. As you can see, he still has his flag as he is very patriotic and I hope you all have had a great holiday weekend and are just spent some time to just stop and thank God for the men and women who just serve and protect us and keep us so safe so we can enjoy the freedoms that we do here in America. And so before we get started, I'm just curious if you're like my friend, Mr. Potato Head, and have your whole body ready. Do you have your hands and your feet still and you're sitting in a wonderful spot ready for today's lesson? That your eyes are on the screen and your ears are ready to hear? How about those thinking caps? Do you have your thinking caps on? Oh, good. And I can hear Mr. Potato Head warning me. We need to get our hearts ready. Are you ready to get your hearts ready with me today? Can you fold your hands and close your eyes and join me in prayer? Gracious and loving God, thank you for all the amazing friends that have joined me today, Lord. And as we pray, we just ask you to settle our hearts and clear our minds of any distractions, Lord, and to just help us to focus on you. Focus on the teaching and the story that you have for us today. Help it to sink into our hearts and transform them to be more like yours. And God, we especially pray for the men and women locally as well as nationally that just take their time and to serve and protect us, Lord, to make it so safe for all of us to enjoy the freedoms that we have here in America. Lord, please protect them and keep them safe as well as they do it for all of us. And God, as we start to listen to today's story, help it to just sink into our hearts and help it to transform us so that we can follow you. And all God's children said, Amen. Well, thank you for joining me today and praying with me. And I have my special book here. And what is a special book called? The Bible. That's right. You guys are so smart. You're yelling to me right when I picked it up. So thank you. And I'm going to look in and see see what God has in store for us today so I can give you a clue because you know every time that we pick up the Bible it's full of amazing stories and teachings so that we can grow closer to God and so we know how to act and behave and how we can follow him and grow closer to him and so that he will love us and we can love him better and we just have a wonderful story today. So I'm trying to think of a clue. And I think I'm going to say, what do farmers grow that can feed all of us? And I'm looking for something very specific that a farmer would grow to help feed us. Does anybody have any ideas? <gasps> Corn, what a great idea. Corn. It's not corn, but what a great guess. Beans. Wow, beans. It's not beans, but man, there are lots of things that farmers grow. So I am just going to show you what it is because I have a feeling that I think I heard it, but I'm not sure because I had a lot of guesses coming at me. So did anybody say grain? That's kind of a hard one. Grain helps make breads and all sorts of stuff. And that farmers grow grain. And in today's story, people grew grain. And we're going to find out how God used grain in the story to help show that he provided for Ruth 
and Boaz and Naomi. So today we have just a wonderful story on how God provides for all of us. And so I want you to look for what the grain has to do with today's story and see all the ways that God provided for Ruth and Boaz and Naomi. But before we get started, we're just gonna do a short review. God's people turned away from God again, and again, and again. And the story of Gideon, the enemies came in and took over. And after a while, the people of Israel remembered how much they needed God. They cried out to him and God sent Gideon to rescue them. God made Gideon Israel's next judge. God gave Gideon victory. God used a weak man like Gideon and kept shrinking his army until the numbers of people in the army were so small, it showed that God was powerful and the one fighting for his people. We need God's help too, just as much today as the Israelites did then. We cannot save ourselves from sin, so God sent his son Jesus to save us. Gideon's story is such a great reminder of God's faithfulness, but also of God's power. God's people chose to forget about him again. So God let their enemies rule over them. This time, the Philistines ruled over the Israelites. And God chose Samson to be the next judge of Israel. God made Samson strong. Samson's hair was not the source of his strength. It was just a picture or symbol of how he obeyed God and God's faithfulness to him. When his hair was cut, Samson lost his strength, not because he lost his hair, but because God took away his amazing strength, because Samson made wrong choices. God was the source of Samson's strength. When Samson was captured and in the temple of a false god, he prayed and asked God for help. God gave Samson his strength once more to defeat the Philistines by pushing over the incredible stone pillars of the temple, killing the Philistine rulers and himself. God used Samson's death to help his people. Jesus never sinned, but Jesus died and rose again to rescue us from sin and give us life with God forever. Hey friends, I'm Megan and this is Jessie. Hi, Megan. You have gotta try some of these strawberries I picked. Oh man, I love strawberries and these look really good. You, you picked these? Yep. A bunch of our friends went out to a strawberry field and we picked so many strawberries. Wow, I'm sure that was so fun. It was, but I think I ate way too many of the strawberries because I got a tummy ache. Oh, that's unfortunate, but understandable. In today's Bible story, a woman named Ruth went out into a field, but she wasn't picking strawberries. She was gathering grain so she and her mother-in-law would have food to eat. Let me tell you how God used Ruth in his plan. Naomi's family lived in Judah but there was not enough food in the land. They decided to go to the land of Moab where they could find food. Naomi's husband died in Moab <laughs> and her sons got married. Their wives' names were Orpah and Ruth. Then Naomi's sons died too. Naomi, Orpah, and Ruth were all alone. Naomi wanted to go home to Judah. Judah had food now. Naomi told Orpah and Ruth to go back to their families. The women were very sad to leave each other. Orpah went home, but Ruth would not leave Naomi. Ruth said, wherever you go, I will go. And wherever you live, I will live. 
your people will be my people, and your God will be my God. So Naomi and Ruth went to Bethlehem. It was time for the farmers to gather what they had planted in their fields. The people gathering the crops left some of the grain on the ground for people who needed it. Ruth went to a field owned by a man named Boaz. Boaz saw Ruth working. He had heard how kind Ruth was to Naomi. Boaz told Ruth to stay in his field where she would be safe. Boaz made sure Ruth had food. Ruth gathered grain in the field and took it home to Naomi. She told Naomi about Boaz. Boaz is a close relative, Naomi said. He is one of our family redeemers. A family redeemer was someone who helped his relatives if they needed help. Thanks. Naomi knew Boaz would be a good husband for Ruth since he was part of their family, so she gave Ruth special instructions. Ruth put on her best clothes and did everything Naomi told her to do. She showed Boaz that she wanted to be his wife. Ruth said, you are a family redeemer. Boaz promised to redeem Ruth, which meant he would buy back the land that Naomi lost after her husband died, and he would marry Ruth. Boaz married Ruth, and they had a baby boy named Obed. When Obed grew up, he was the father of Jesse, who was the father of King David. Boaz was a family redeemer. He helped his close relatives. Boaz bought back what his relatives lost. Jesus is our redeemer. He bought our salvation by dying on the cross for our sin. Naomi's husband and sons died, meaning her family no longer had a way to keep the land that belonged to them in Israel. Naomi told her son's wives Orpah and Ruth to go back home to their families. The women were very sad to leave each other and Orpah went home, but Ruth would not leave Naomi. Ruth said, wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you live, I will live. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. So Naomi and Ruth went to Bethlehem. Ruth worked hard to gather food to feed them both. But Ruth and Naomi needed help. They needed food and protection. God provided for Ruth and Naomi. Boaz was one of their family redeemers. A family redeemer helped his close relatives or those within his family who were in trouble. Boaz helped and cared for Ruth and Naomi, and he married Ruth and bought back the land that Naomi's family had lost. Jesus is our Redeemer. He bought our salvation by dying on the cross for our sins. Our big picture question has been helping us see what to do when we sin. Remember our big picture question? What is repentance? Repentance is turning away from sin and turning to Jesus. Sin hurts us and others. It keeps us from God. When we turn away from the sinful choices and turn to Jesus instead, only Jesus is our Redeemer. Jesus can fix our hearts and help us love God and His Word. Our key passage reminds us that God is righteous. God always does what is right and good. We do not always do what is right and good. We are sinners, but when we confess our sins, God will forgive us because of Jesus. Please listen as I read our verse for this unit. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us. 1 John 1, 9a. Now let's read the verse all together. 
If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us. 1 John 1, 9a. Great job. Now, are you ready? Can you please stand up so we can do our memory verse motions together? Is everybody standing and ready to do the motions for our verse? All right, let's do it two times because I know you guys are getting so great at them. Ready? If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us. 1 John 1, 9a. Great job. Let's do it one more time. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us. 1 John 1, 9a. What a great job doing the verse. Hi preschoolers, Miss Natalie here. I hope that you really loved today's story because I sure did. And here's what I love most about today's story. I think that it shows us how the kingdom of God is supposed to work. We see Naomi loving Ruth so well that Ruth can see God in Naomi's life. And then we see Boaz being obedient to God's ways and caring for the people around him so well that Ruth is drawn to him. And then we see Boaz taking care of Ruth and Naomi and they're just loving and caring for each other just the way God designed and t teaches us to. And so when we all do that, the kingdom of God is this beautiful place. And so that is what I want us to be thinking about today as I close us out in prayer, boys and girls, is how we can do that in our lives. So would you please close your eyes and bow your head, and I will close us out in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for providing for us, for all our needs. Thank you for our houses. Thank you for the food on our tables. Lord, thank you for all the people that you put in our lives to love us and thank you for trusting us to love other people and putting them in our life. Lord, help us to turn to your word and help us to learn what it means to be your children and how we should treat people. And then, Lord, just help us to do it. Help us to love those people that you have placed in our lives around us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, boys and girls, I can't wait to see you next week, but don't head off too soon because we have some worship songs coming up next. Have a great weekend. See you next week.